And joining us tonight is the Weekend Chief of Staff of the Herald Sun, Caleb Bond, and Radio 6 PR super producer, Carolee Katzenbarnas. Gang, let's jump straight in with your newspaper, The Herald Sun, because it's all happening on The Splash tomorrow. Fatal weight is the headline. Ambulance ramping times were rising years before COVID-19 and are associated with a significant increase in patients' risk of dying within the following 30 days. Shocking new Victorian research has now revealed. The alarming study released yesterday <coughs> estimates that ramping may have been associated with 70 preventable deaths in patients who suffered chest pain during 2018. That's even before COVID was a glint in a bat's eye. Caleb, what is going on in your state? Well, to put it bluntly, the Victorian health system is totally and utterly rooted. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, this is, this is really... Daniel Andrews' legacy in Victoria, you know, for the uh, about 11 of the last 15 years, he's been in charge of the health system here in some way or another. He was the, um, the health minister in the Brumby government and then he's been premier for nearly eight years now. And under his watch, the health system has fallen apart. You had on Tuesday morning, between the hours of midnight and 4am, mm. a code red with yeah. ambulances here. Yeah. And at one point during that code red, as you talked about last night, you know, there were no ambulances available at all. Mm. You've got ramping that we see in this study says has possibly caused up to 70 preventable deaths. Mm. During the pandemic, the government cut the number of triple zero call takers they had across police, fire and ambulance. Mm. The health budget for 2022-23 is $2 billion fewer than it was in 21-22. What are they doing? I mean, yeah. they clearly have problems in front of them. And the state government's jumping up and down and saying, oh, we're hiring more, more uh, paramedics mm. and we're hiring more triple zero call takers. That's all good and well, mm. but we, we have far more serious problems than just being able to hire a few people yeah. and pretend it's all going to go away. Absolutely. This is deep-seated, yeah, deep-seated, and they have done nothing about it for 15 years. Yeah, well, if you want things to be changed and to be paid better, Carolee, maybe head to the public service because City CEO Pay Anger is another headline on the front of the hunt tomorrow. Ratepayers have reacted with outrage that the City of Melbourne Chief Executive, Justin Hanney, has pocketed another pay rise, meaning he now rakes in almost as much as Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. <coughs> How do you think this is going to go down, either in the wider public or especially on Talkback tomorrow? Well, I don't think it's good, is it, Jenna? I mean, CEOs, they earn an awful lot. We know here in Western Australia, Colin Barnett, the previous Liberal Premier, did try to tackle the local government conundrum and try and really reduce the number of local councils we have here. That didn't go too down, down too mm. well. It was abandoned. But you can see that with these CEOs earning these massive, massive six-figure salaries, is it really justified? I mean, ratepayers have got every right to be outraged. I mean, what happened to the roads, rates and rubbish mm. and chuck and recycling now as well. It's just too much money and I think given the last couple of years of COVID, you know, we're now having our rates increased as well. I don't think people are really seeing value for money and um, I just think it's far too much <laughs> money for any local government CEO. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on now to... I don't to know about a... the roads and rates, but there's plenty of rubbish. <laughs> yeah, indeed. 